my friend, my name is Terry Petrovic, and for the past 25 years, I've been teaching, coaching, and training people how to create a better quality of life, primarily through the network marketing profession. Today, uh, I live a lifestyle that most people would only dream about, but it hasn't always been that easy for me. Uh, I do believe that success and prosperity have a lot to do with our philosophies, uh, our programming at the conscious and unconscious levels, and the truth is, all of us, from time to time, uh, need advice, counsel, and wisdom from people who've been where we want to go. My question for you is, why is it that maybe some people in your company or some people that you know have more prosperity abundance than you do? Why is it that they've been able to accomplish it and sometimes you struggle? Well, I've created this series and I call it Prosperity and the Mentors. Uh, and I've pulled some of the best people on the planet who actually have created what I believe is a very prosperous and abundant life. I want to take you behind the curtain a little bit and kind of introduce you to them and help you understand where they came from, where they are, uh, how they think, how they overcome challenges, what kind of personal habits they have. Now, today, I am absolutely thrilled to have this guest on with us today. Um, he has been in the network marketing profession and personal growth business since, gosh, uh, the late 80s. Uh, he's primarily known for his network marketing focus. He's an author, a co-author, editor, two dozen plus books. Actually, uh, this book changed my life, uh, Greatest Networker in the World. It sold well over two and a half million copies and is among one of the best-selling books uh, in the entire industry. Um, he's, you know, created several magazines like Network Marketing Magazines, Upline Magazines, Network Marketing Lifestyle. He's a, he's a champion for our industry of personal growth. He recently was inducted to the Direct Sales Hall of Fame. His current focus is on communication, and I absolutely love this because communication is about speaking and it's about listening. And the reality of it is, I think, most of us have never really been taught how to do that, don't know how to do that. It impacts our relationships, it impacts our business. It impacts everything in terms of who we are and what we do. He lives in Virginia, and my guest today is Mr. John Milton Fogg. John, thanks so much for being here, man. My pleasure. Well, you know, John, share a little bit with our viewers um, what prosperity means to you, where you came from, how you've been able to create the impact and influence that you've been able to accomplish over the last several decades, and how you've been able to create the quality of life that you have today. Um, I don't know, I don't know. I don't <laughs> know, and I don't know. Uh, that's, a, that's way too many questions, Terry. <laughs> Um, you got a specific in there? Yeah, let, let's talk about prosperity. If you could define prosperity, what would it mean to you and how do you define it? Oh, dear. Well, it ain't the money. And I've... I've been a multimillionaire and I've struggled to feed my family. So I know both sides of that. Um, and, and certainly someone long ago introduced me to the term, which is like one click up from um, financial security. He introduced me to the term financial serenity. And, uh, so from a financial point of view, it's that serenity, um, very much like the serenity prayer. God grant me uh, the ability to accept the things I cannot change, to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So from a financial point of view, that's prosperity. The longer I live, and, and I've been blessed, um, and, and when, when I said I don't know, I'm not being a smart butt about that. It's really, who knows? I mean, I think we say God knows because God's the only one who does. Um, I sure don't. Uh, if somebody said, give me a map 
for how you progressed through life. Um, I guess I could retrospectively look and say, well, this happened, then that happened, then this happened, then that happened. Um, I certainly didn't plan my life the way it's gone. Um, and where I'm at today at 70, uh, and, and not the least bit begrudging, I, I laugh at, I, I, <laughs> I listen to people, I've been around long enough, so I, I now have many friends who are 50 and 60, and I listen to them about, well, you know, I'm old now, and uh, I just uh, <laughs> laugh at them, you know, you're kidding me. Um, I don't know how many years I've got left, but my prosperity goal is to do work that I'm blessed to do. I, I say, and, and, it, and it, it takes some courage for me to say this because it sounds like bragging and I can't stand bragging but I've been blessed with a brilliant mind and a servant's heart. Um, there are some things, and when I say brilliant mind, I don't mean all the time. I mean, I, I can do stupid as masterfully as anybody you know. Um, and, and I've got a lot of ignorance, but ignorance and stupid are different things. Ignorance is you just don't know. Um, stupid is you're not capable of it. Um, so a lot of things I'm ignorant about, but I want to do for the, for the next chunk of my life, whether it's the last, you know, whether it's the, the last quarter of the football game or the last or the third act of the play, I don't know. Um, but I want to do work that makes a real difference in people's lives. And I want to be well paid for it. Um, and that's a huge chunk of prosperity. And I want to see damn near daily progress in my quest to be a better human being. That's, uh, that's incredible. That? <clears throat> one, of, one of the things, John, that I find fascinating here is that you have already impacted millions and millions of people around the globe. Um, not too many people have that level of influence. And to, to hear you talk about you want to up your game is, is really, really inspiring. Let me back up just a little bit and ask the question of what was it about network marketing, uh, the people in it that you felt so attracted to to help them paint a maybe a, a new vision of possibility, or you were able to um, assemble uh, different people. You know, the, the other book I have is, you know, Conversations with the Greatest Network Marketers in the World, which I absolutely love. So you, you, you are that, that connector, but what is it about that space that you found attractive? I came to it... Um as the director of marketing of a natural and health food company, I started with them in the early 70s. The company was called Erwan. It was one of the pioneering companies um, in the natural and health food business. Uh, to give you a sense of who we were, um, we helped and counseled uh, a little outfit out of San Antonio called Whole Foods. Um, they were just starting and we were of enough size to give them products and advice and assist them, you know, on their journey and you know what's happened with them. Um, what attracted me to network marketing, what got me there was that I was in, in the natural and health food business and so many products, uh, network marketing, direct selling products were of the health and natural uh, domain, if you will. Um, so that's kind of the happenstance of how I was in 
the right place at the right time. Uh, and I was the director of marketing. And marketing was a... I came at marketing from the advertising angle. Um, and so I was a student of marketing because I knew, I knew the ad part. I knew the marketing communication part, writing brochures and headlines and doing all that. Um, but in terms of marketing structure and, and the rules and regulations and how do you do this and that, I, I didn't know that. So I was studying it. And that was the first big appeal of network marketing to me. In my marketing learning, I found many things to be true and to work. Word of mouth marketing was maybe number one. And here was this business structure that harnessed word of mouth marketing. And so that got my attention right away. Um, and dare I say the, the moral, ethical, even spiritual um, qualities of this business model that people could partner with a company that handled um, – research and development that handled warehousing and shipping and in and in and in, all of these chunks of business that you didn't have to deal with and you could still be an entrepreneur and own your own business but you were in partnership with this company that handled all that and your job was to promote the products your job was to sell the products and you were enabled by the structure to build a an organization from which you could benefit by the success of all the individuals within that organization. And those individuals could do the business any way they wanted to that worked. They could also do the business any way they wanted to that didn't work, but obviously, you know, and so your job was to coach, to counsel, um, to teach them, educate them, and be a servant leader. All this stuff came together in uh, direct sales and network marketing. And I just thought it was, and I still do, an utterly brilliant business model. It was democratic. It was a meritocracy. It was, it had those great aspects of social democracy where you, you where people were taking care of each other and supporting each other um, a, a, a leader was a coach it was just all this stuff just blew me away and that was my first attraction to it along with the classic I tried a product. I loved the product. I asked the people about the product. I bought the product. I used it. Then I started recommending it. Then I started bringing people, sponsoring people who could use it and recommend it. Boom. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. You know, one of the things that I think um, it's, it's really about being authentic. When you, when you know what you know, you obviously want to share it. And if you believe in your heart of hearts that it can help somebody, it's a, it's a, it's a true blessing. Let me, let me ask you a couple of behind the curtain questions here, and then we'll jump in a little bit more to some of the business questions. You know, um, you know of course, to pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. So as long as that's clear. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Um, so throughout your career um, and where you are today, do you have any morning or evening rituals? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, well, I, I shift how to say this, but I'm a recovering alcoholic. And I've been sober for 
moving on to about seven years and uh, a little fun chunk of that is that one of the key people in my, actually a number of the key people in my sobriety were people I discovered in network marketing. Um, Tom Chenault was pretty much a sponsor of mine uh, in recovery. Doug Fireball, a gentleman who sadly is no longer with us, Brian Klemmer. Um, These guys were a tremendous influence uh, in helping me get to the point where I quit drinking. Um, I also, in the process, I latched on to AA and the core structure of AA is based on first century Christianity. Um, it, there's a, there was a group out of Oxford University called the Oxford Group and a lot of the initial offering of AA, the 12 steps was based on that. And so without any intention, I ended up digging into Christianity. And uh, just because AA was um, so many parts of, of, Christian, I can't use the word doctrine because I don't know even if that's it, but structure, um, uh, accepting uh, God as your higher power um, and understanding grace. I mean, when somebody said, how did you get sober? I got sober by the grace of God. I'd quit 20 or 30 times successfully. I just didn't stay quit. And so now it's, you know, pushing seven years. Um, So long story, uh, every morning and when I get up, pretty much coffee first, then I read a series of about nine or ten daily messages. You can call them devotionals, if you will. It's it's instruction. in uh, and and it's it's Christian based. Although I also read a chunk of the Quran every morning, um, and a, a couple of different pastors and writers that I admire. And when I go to bed at night, uh, I do uh, the same thing with a different curriculum, if you will. So every morning and every evening, uh, that's what I do, and. I'm very clear that uh, my life is very much like the serenity prayer. Um, You know, God's in charge of the outcomes and God's in charge of my life. And and one of the um, quests I'm on is to get off of my self and my goal is totally just to get rid of that self-centeredness in every possible area of my life and it ain't easy baby (laughs) what would be the benefit of doing that (laughs) it's hard work so what would be the benefit to you for accomplishing that goal which i believe you will what would be the benefit? Yep. Freedom. Freedom of what? Freedom of, freedom for, freedom to, freedom all over the place. Okay. I mean, when I say the serenity prayer, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm an editor. I'm a writer and an editor, and I can't help myself but mess with stuff. <laughs> even even great stuff, I gotta go change it, you know? <laughs> um, and that last line of the serenity prayer is, and the wisdom to know the difference, 
my edit of that is, and your wisdom to know the difference. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, God's got the courage. God's got the wisdom. I don't need to um, do my own thing in those areas. And the fact of the matter is, Terry, most of the screw-ups I've had in my life, which are leg uh, legion, um, have come from me doing it my way. Gotcha. I, I, I love the fact that um, you are so committed, John, to uh, becoming a better version of yourself, if you will. And I think it's an important lesson for all of our viewers and, and readers to really understand that, uh, first, I think we have to accept who we are at this time, but we have to have a vision of who we want to become and where we want to go. And that journey may not always be easy. It might bring up a lot of our limiting beliefs and thoughts. Uh, and I, I think, go ahead. He's eating. Easy ain't part of it, buddy. That's right. <laughs> at, at, least, at least not yet. <clears throat> right. Someday. Yeah. Well, some people, some people, it seems like, you know, it all flows to them and it's easy. For me, you know, it has never been easy. Anything I've ever done uh, has never well, been easy, but it has look, been worthwhile. I've, I have honestly never met anybody for whom it was genuinely easy. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is that most of the people who I admire as successful uh, have experienced significant adversity. And right. it's through dealing with that adversity that they developed the deep skills and the perspectives that creates success. Um, right. You know, you don't, you don't learn how to be a really good sailor in perfect conditions. You learn how to be a good sailor when it gets dicey. That's right. when you really start to right. learn. And I don't think it's any different, you know, being in a boat on the ocean or being, you know, your own boat in the ocean of life. I agree. It, it's something aspiring about that. I've got a eight year old grandson who's got some physical health challenges and he inspires me and thousands of people all over the world on his journey because it, it is a significant one. Uh, let me ask you this, John, um, is there a, a book or perhaps an item that you find yourself sharing with people on a regular basis, giving away maybe? I'm sorry, you're asking, is there a book? Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, so I know that you see and interact with lots of people uh, because you are uh, such a powerful influencer. Is there, is there a book or an item that you give to people to help them or support them on a consistent basis? You know, you say over the last, you know, 10 or 20 years or, you know, even just recently. Uh, I think we all have our little toolbox that we really – uh, the tools that speak highly to us personally, and we have a tendency to maybe share with other people to maybe help them a little bit. Um, I read about six or seven books at once not including those morning and evening readings that I do that I told you about. Right. Um, maybe because I'm a writer. Uh, I listen to them in the car. Uh, I, I frequently, I found that for me, the kind of super learning is to have the book in, in print and that's, now it's digital print for me and audio. So I play back and forth. Um, I just had an experience. I'm reading one of the books I'm reading right now is the laws of human nature. And, um, 
It's, whoa, mama. It's just incredible. Um, and I learned about it listening to a James Altucher podcast, then ran immediately and bought uh, the audio book and then bought the print book. And I find myself listening to something on audio and then running back and reading that same thing a second time. And, and they, they get into me in a different way um, and, and sink in. Um, I've got some books that are absolute favorites, whether it be entertainment fiction or um, learning, knowledge increasing, wisdom increasing books. Uh, but there's not a single book, including my own, that, uh, that I give to people and say, this is what you've got to read, you know, uh, think and grow rich or, uh, you know, even, even the Bible. Um, I, I just, I've never had that. I've got, if I list, if I were to try to, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't list the people who I consider to be my teachers and my mentors because the list is infinite. It just everybody, everything that I can get my hands on. Uh, I'm a I'm a learning machine, and I made a career, uh, Terry, out of learning stuff and then sharing it with people. I, I'm compelled to turn you on to whatever it is I'm learning. Gotcha. Gotcha. So let's say somebody is um, an entrepreneur. Um, they sort of have a vision of where they want to go for their network marketing. They want to be a top, you know, income earner in a company, uh, but they're struggling. They're spinning their wheels. They're just not having success. Um, you know, do you have one or two suggestions uh, John, that might be able to help them create a shift maybe in their thinking or their mindset that they can make further progress? Uh, perspective is one of the most under appreciated and under under understood can I say that <laughs> ooh bad writer bad uh, the thing about perspective is its power is that all of our inner and outer actions thoughts and behaviors stem from our perspective. And people, I think, have a misguided perspective about network marketing where the goal is whatever they deem, picture, envision, need, want, success to be. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you are, for 99.979% of your journey, failing. You haven't reached your goal. You're falling short of your goal. So a perspective I encourage from the get-go is learning. The goal is learning. Um, when your goal is learning, you win every day. Mm. And one of the things mm. I've learned about progress is we've got to build in success to our process 
um, if you don't succeed, you know, I noticed there's a piece of exercise equipment uh, behind you in your home office. And if you were to use that piece of equipment the day you started and then again the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day, and you didn't see any increase in your stamina, your vitality, if it didn't get a little easier, if you weren't making progress, if you didn't experience success, you that thing be out of your room. You wouldn't have it around, you wouldn't touch it. And if we look at our lives and exercise, you know, uh, going to the gym or running or any of those things is a perfect place to look because when people quit, it's because they're not seeing success. In order to stay in any game, to stick with any process, you've got to see that success. And when your goal is learning, you can see success every day. Mm. And so when I'm doing coaching for people, I'm so much more focused on their learning. Um, one of the things I've learned is that it, anything, anything is always about the energy. Um, and that's a, it, it takes, there's more conversation that needs to be had about this. But if you are aware of the energy and you pursue growing, increasing energy and get rid of all inner and outer actions and behaviors that decrease the energy, positive and negative is shorthand, but it, it's accurate. Um, just go where the energy is. Go where the energy is growing. And uh, that's a real key to success. So for me, it's a shift in perspective. And, and part of my work is to help people shift to perspective to growing energy in all circumstances and getting away from diminishing energy. And an example of that is when we think about and have conversations about what's wrong focused on the problem that drains energy. When we think about what's right, focus on our vision, on what's working, energy grows. And so that's a fundamental perspective shift that I teach, train, encourage, and, and give myself to uh, with, you know, I don't, I don't bat a thousand with it, but it's something I'm really focused on. Because whatever you focus on is going to become the center of your life. That's all there is to it. That's just the way it works. And so what I want people to focus on, because I want me to focus on and my kids to focus on, is what are those positive energy building things? Because the more we do that, the more our life works successfully. Right. So what I'm hearing you say is that <clears throat> visualization and perhaps meditation are key in terms of us accomplishing what it is that we want to accomplish. Not necessarily. Well, for some people, uh, you know, I can't meditate my way out of a gauzy aura. <laughs> I just, oh man, um, it's like prayer. I struggle with that. I just, but you know, I hang in there and I, I keep doing it. Um, 
I find uh, one of the reasons I read the devotionals I do is because I can do that. I can read. Um, you know, I kind of stumble with prayer, but I can read um, writer, Christian writers material and, and I can read scripture uh, and I can dig into that. So um, is meditation required? No, highly recommended to try, but it may not be your thing. Um, some people are better at a moving meditation, like Tai Chi, something like that, where there's an activity that goes along with um, calming and quieting and focusing your mind. Um, in terms of visualization, uh, clearly it works, but it only works if it works for you. And this is, you know, one thing I've caught a lot of flack for over the years, um, especially from uplines with a duplicatable system, is there's only one way to do direct sales network marketing. There's only one right way. And that's the way that works best for you. Right. And my favorite example of that is Tom Big Al Schreider. If you had a system that was all about the phone, three-way calls, sizzle calls, uh, tapping into opportunity calls, and you explained to Tom that's how you did the business, he would run away screaming because he hates the phone. He is, it's awkward, he's uncomfortable, he doesn't like it. I've done so many interviews with Tom over the years and it's just not his thing. Yet this is a guy who can, for 395 days a year, travel the world, stand on stage and talk to people you know, 10 minutes after he got off a 15 hour plane flight. So it's what works best for you. And a really enlightened sponsor's job is to identify the strengths of the people coming into the business, their personal and professional resources and assist and support them to make the most of those, which can also include things they don't know yet that they want to learn to develop. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I agree with that 100%. There's no right way or wrong way. You just got to figure out your way and it is focus on your strengths so you can create more wins because uh, that'll definitely move you down the road for sure. Let's and say somebody... Terry, there are things that are fundamental. There are skills that you need to have. It's, it's why I focus on communication. Um, if you can't communicate, you're in the wrong business in terms of direct sales and network marketing. It's all a conversation, whether that's texting or Facebook or email or phone or from the stage. It's all a conversation. So what there is to get good at are those two, and it's interesting, I've been thinking about this recently and I haven't come to a conclusion, but it's funny, speaking and listening are both skills and tools. And I'm really wondering about that. I think that's unique, that it's a skill and a tool, a skill and a tool. What, what's true about that? But that's why I focus on speaking and listening because they're so vitally important in doing this business. This is a relationship-based business and communication, speaking and listening is the single most significant factor for your success.
Yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, I agree hundred percent. You know, my philosophy is that I hate to be sold anything, but I like to buy. So understand my needs, understand uh, my desires, show me how I can, you know, achieve those, get those, then I will do whatever. And I think a a thing a a lot of people struggle with, I'd love to get your perspective on it is people make it about themselves as opposed to who they're trying to serve or help. Um, What's your thoughts on that? Human nature. Mm. We, you know, whether anybody watching or listening to this likes it or not, human beings are basically selfish. And you can accept that as a given and go through your life being that way, or you can see if there is a chance to raise that one up a bit and be more selfless. You know, I I told you earlier on that part of my personal spiritual goal is to discard as much self-centeredness as I can and be more God-centered. And, uh, you know, people love to get into intellectual arguments about that one. Well, what about your own self-will? What about critical thinking? What about, what about, what about? Well, (laughs) knock yourself out. You know, I do better. I, John, do better when uh, I'm focused in on you know, God, what do you want me to do here? Guide me. You know, you blessed me with some skills and talents and abilities. But in terms of it being about me, 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 sorry. I just, you know, I'm 70 years old. That hasn't worked that well for me. Right. I also think that we we attract the right people into our lives, which will absolutely make our life uh, have more fulfillment as well. Uh, let me ask you a, a couple of uh, other questions a little bit on uh, a lighter side. If you had the ability, John, to send uh, everybody a message on their phone around the world tomorrow, um, what would that message say? Well, I said it to you before, I'll say it again. Just because this is on the top of my head right now, and I'm looking at the piece of paper where this is printed out because I want this in my face. Communication, the essential skills of speaking and listening plays a more significant role in creating success at home and in your career than any other single factor. Mm -hmm. I am, Terry, I'm absolutely convinced and, 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 the, and the beauty is that if you were to rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being couldn't be better, if you were to rate yourself as a speaker and as a listener, um, I can promise you that by paying focused attention to your speaking, which more than anything else, is learning how to ask the right questions. And you're listening, which more than anything else, is getting off yourself and focusing fully and completely on the other person you're speaking with without judging, without agreeing or disagreeing, really, truly listening if you were to up those by one point each, you'd have a substantial change in your life. And mm. you're capable of bringing both of those up to 10. Not that, be- not, not that you won't learn more, because in both speaking and listening, 
it's a lifelong journey. It will, you know, once you get on the path, it's a drug. You're hooked. You're an addict. You want to get better and better and better. And you have a conversation with your wife and you realize that your smart ass answer was because you needed to be right. Yep. And, and you get that you didn't listen. You were more invested in being right than you were in connecting, in understanding, in, in, in making that connection a heart to heart connection in making mm-hmm. that loving. There is so much that you can do. And I don't know how many people asking the right questions, being curious and candid, and really openly listening to others. I don't know how many people it will take to change the world, but I can't think of any other single thing you could be doing that can have such an impact. And if you want to get practical, let's go back to prospecting for your network marketing business. It's a conversation. It's identifying the needs and wants of that person you're talking to, learning her values, his values, and if they're if it's a fit, marrying them to your product or your opportunity. What else is there? That's what you're doing, isn't it? Yeah, you know that is. Um, I think that's a. Um, <laughs> Just so vitally important. Uh, but like I said earlier, it is a skill. Uh, and I just want to wrap this up by saying thank you, John, for spending your time sharing your wisdom. And I know that you have some resources and you're going to continue to develop resources around this whole speaking, listening, communications umbrella. So if somebody wants to plug into to you and what you're doing, what's the best way for them to do that, John? Um, right now... It's on Facebook, and it's a group. So the URL, facebook.com slash groups, plural, slash speaking and listening. Spell it out, speaking and listening. I've got a book, Speaking and Listening. It's a, it's a little one. It takes 17 minutes to read. Uh, it was originally designed as a TED Talk. Um, I give that book away free, and there's pretty much daily stuff in that group. Um, And there are online courses to come and coaching to come. Um, That's not ready yet, and I'm not pushing it. Just, you know, join the group, facebook.com slash groups slash speaking and listening. And um, there's a wealth of stuff there and more to come. Well, John, again, thank you so much for, for sharing that information. I've read that book. It's, it's, it's really good. And, and I think it, it, the journey really begins with awareness and then a desire to really improve. And what I love about what you're doing is I think it encompasses everything and who we really are. And uh, I think as leaders uh, and as influencers, uh, we need to do a better job of listening uh, and speaking to the needs, goals, desires of the individual and being present. Uh, because when we, we go down that path, I think we will end up having more fulfillment, more joy in our life. So it can actually be very self-serving if we do a good job of speaking and listening. So thank you again, my friend. Thank you, Terry. I appreciate you very much. You betcha. So, my friend, I hope you got some value out of this. Um, you know, plug into to John's Facebook group. Wealth of information there. And as you go on your journey of prosperity and abundance and creating more of everything that you want in your life, uh, know that it's, it's a process. Uh, as John mentioned earlier, it may not always be easy, but you have to have that vision of, number one, who you want to become, and the how you'll get there will show up uh, over time. I appreciate you. Remember this. 
you have a choice. Make it a better than terrific day and a prosperous one because you, my friend, absolutely deserve it. Till next time, bye-bye for now.